Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Hishmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN north of the Seattle area in Everett, Washington. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about itching or pruritus in pregnancy. Um, specifically, I wanna talk about two different conditions, pups and cholestasis of pregnancy. Uh, and so I'm gonna start with pups. Um, so pups is pruritic uticarial pupules and plaques of pregnancy. Uh, the joke I often have with my patients is, you know, as a med student, you dreaded being asked what pups stood for because you had to come up and remember that. Um, but with pups, uh, typically this is something that's going to occur in the third trimester, so in the latter part of pregnancy. It's usually going to be in first-time moms. And in the striae or in the stretch marks uh, that women get on their abdomen, they're going to start getting itching and they're going to get these little plaques and things like that and erythema or redness. Um, so oftentimes women will come in and they're going to get really worried when they get this uh, and the reason is because they've googled or searched online and found cholestasis of pregnancy and they're wondering if this is going to be harmful to their pregnancy. Well, with pups there is no risk to mom, there is no risk to baby. We don't entirely know what causes it but the thought is that the, the stretching exposes the connective tissue uh, and to more uh, antigens and then it's going to cause the itching there. But it's something that's typically going to go away within about a week or two after the pregnancy is over. It doesn't need anything specific as far as management, although I'll typically prescribe somebody a, a topical mild steroid and maybe an antihistamine just to minimize the symptoms. Um, so that's, it's more something that is a nuisance than an actual harm. Now when women come in, the reason they're concerned is because of cholestasis of pregnancy. So pups, again, if you think about it, it's primarily on the abdomen, it's got the rash, and it's itching. Cholestasis of pregnancy, so what's cholestasis? So chole is bile, stasis not really moving around much. So bile is what the liver produces and stores in the gallbladder, and it helps break down in the digestion of, of fats and things like that. So with cholestasis of pregnancy, that bile slows down its movement in the liver or, or just kind of becomes very static in there. That bile then is gonna spill out and so you're gonna get increased bile levels and bile acids throughout the body, and that is a risk to the pregnancy. Now, cholestasis of pregnancy is typically something that's also in the latter part of pregnancy, typically in the second or third trimester. There's a lot we don't understand about cholestasis of pregnancy. There's probably genetic components, it's got some hormonal response because we think part of the reason that it's in the latter part of pregnancy is there's estrogen levels that are higher, uh, Progesterone levels that are also going to be higher have an influence. So sometimes we have people on supplemental progesterone uh, and in the latter part of pregnancy for preterm labor. And so we're starting to look at that a little bit. There's a genetic component. So for instance, there's a higher incidence of cholestasis uh, in Bolivia. There's a higher incidence of it in the Indians in Chile. Um, but with cholestasis of pregnancy, women are typically going to present. They don't have a rash they're typically going to have pruritus or itching in the palms and in the soles. So it's going to start kind of more in the extremities rather than the abdomen and then spread to other areas. With cholestasis of pregnancy, the reason we become concerned is uh, for reasons we don't quite understand, there is a risk to babies. So there's a higher risk of fetal demise or babies dying with cholestasis of pregnancy. And so that's why women often when they start having itching they get really concerned because you know, they go, do I have pups? Do I have cholestasis? What, what's going on here? Now, with cholestasis, how do we diagnose this? So typically, we're going to send some blood work. It's going to look for basically the bile acids, and we're going to see that there's elevated levels in there. We may also see elevated levels of liver function tests. So that, in conjunction with the symptoms in a pregnant woman, is going to give us that diagnosis there if there's no other clear explanation for it. Now, with cholestasis of pregnancy, once it occurs, it's more often to occur in another pregnancy. So, you know, as high as 60 or 70 percent of the time, that can happen. Uh, the itching is probably because of these bile acids that are under the skin. Um, we don't really know what causes the increased risk to the baby. Uh, and when somebody has this, we're typically, and at least in my practice, we'll do increased fetal surveillance, meaning non-stress tests and ultrasounds. and. You know, the things we do for our high-risk patients that have diabetes or hypertension or things like that. Now, I do tell people up front, our data doesn't actually show that that increased fetal surveillance or monitoring has any kind of impact or improvement on the pregnancy, but it is something that we do and we recommend. We also will start somebody on a medication uh, called uracidocholic acid. So, uh, uracidocholic acid is something that is going to not only help with the symptoms and the itching, it's going to reduce and improve those lab levels, but it's also thought to improve outcomes for babies. Now, 
because of the risks to the baby with cholestasis of pregnancy, we're typically going to recommend somebody be delivered between 36 and 37-ish weeks, somewhere around that point, and then we would expect everything to resolve on its own. So really when you compare and contrast those two, again with pups, you know, typically it's going to be itching in the abdomen where the stretch marks, it's not harmful, mild topical steroids, whereas cholestasis of pregnancy is more going to be uh, itching without a rash that's starting in the palms and the soles that does carry a risk to the pregnancy and it's going to affect our management and things like that. The other thing I would throw out there with cholestasis of pregnancy is sometimes the itching precedes the lab abnormalities. So occasionally if I've got somebody who's got classical symptoms of cholestasis and I do the labs and it all looks good, I might repeat those again you know, a couple weeks later if their symptoms are worsening and not getting better and I don't otherwise have a clear explanation for it. Um, so those are kind of the, the, the two big uh, concerning things that come up from patients with itching uh, and pregnancy. And so oftentimes, like I said, women will have pups and they'll come in and they'll Google and they'll read about cholestasis of pregnancy. Uh, so I want to provide that reassurance if it's pups. And if it's cholestasis of pregnancy, what's important is that we identify it, we know it's there, and then that we proceed with an earlier delivery uh, just to reduce those risks to the baby um, of things like fetal demise or fetal death. Uh, so I hope that's helpful explaining the two there. Uh, thanks a lot.